Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific Time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the instructions in the video description. All right, let's do it. Where is this played out of? So this is this is a Golden West Casino in Bakersfield. Okay. Playing 3-5, uh, 300 to 1,500 cap. 3-5... Three five three hundred to fifteen hundred buy in. I'm pretty sure that one of our coaches, Key Lee, I don't know if you're a COP sub, and his wife, they're both pilots. I think they flew up okay. to play that game one day. Just kind of flew up in a little <laughs> Cessna. <laughs> I heard yeah, the game can, was good. It can, yeah, it can play pretty deep, uh, especially tonight, like Mondays. Uh, it plays more like a five ten. Most people are buying in for the max. Right. Every other time, it's usually about a five to one thousand buy in. Yep. Um, so anyway, uh, we have six, seven of clubs in the hijack, uh, three people linked to us and we opened at 25 in the hijack uh, cut off neck. Yes, sir. What, what are the blinds in this game again? Three, uh, five, three right? five. So that's kind yeah. of a small raise anyway. I mean, what's the straight open raise here? Usually, um, when it, when it's playing more like a typical three, five, it's usually about a 15 to 20 open. Um, and I, I know this is kind of on the small side. When it's playing larger, it's usually a 30, 35 open. I mean, here's the thing. I mean, I talked about this on my podcast. It's going to come out tomorrow, too. Like, once two people limp in from up front, I do a fair amount of over limping, and the hands that I raise with are is my, are my EP opens, like nines and eights plus, ace, jack plus, king, queen. I would just over limp this hand. And I, and I don't know if I would do it to try to induce the entire table to call. I mean, you have a suited mm -hmm. connector, so... I mean, it would even be it would be better to like raise Ace X suited here to get the entire table to call than seven six suited. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm not yeah, sure the agree. the size down or why you would raise over three limps. But okay, you make it twenty five from the hijack. And the cutoff on my direct left, he raises to eighty. How deep are you guys, by the way? Um, we're nine hundred effective. Nine hundred. About nine nine fifty. Okay. With 900. the two main villains. Okay. So he makes it 80. Um, so two limps yep. call um, in the blind uh, cold call and the under the gun plus one calls. Um, at that point, I kind of figured I'm, I'm priced in a hand that plays better multi way. Um, so, so I go ahead and make the call. So there's like five calls ahead of you, two cold calls in the big, in the blind and then a couple limpers call. Is that right? No, excuse me. There's a cold call in the small blind. And uh, the under the gun plus one calls. Okay, so so twenty five eighty small blind calls, UTG one calls, and hero calls. Okay, correct. I mean, I think I you, so I would call now for fifty five. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the flops, uh, the pot three twenty, and the flop is king of spades, jack of clubs, five of clubs. Okay, so you flop sort of a dryish flush draw with seven six of clubs, but you sort of do have some backdoors to backdoor sort of a straightening type of hand, right? Correct. Which, by the way, uh, so is why like these middling suiting connectors actually do a little bit better. It's kind of like in PLO, they do better actually short-handed because now you got to be concerned about being over flushed here, which is the whole reason why I'm not sweetening a hand like this. I would rather sweeten an, sweeten an ace x hand. I'm not one for sweetening many hands at all, but. It kind of demonstrates mm -hmm. the point, though. So King of Spades, Jack of Clubs, Five of Clubs, okay. Does he get checked to the preflop Check raiser? Yes, sir, and okay. uh, he bets 170. Okay. After that, the uh, under the gun plus one calls, and then uh, right when he calls, I'm about to call as well with my draw. Yep. And the dealer, I guess, didn't think I had cards and turns over the eight of diamonds. Okay. So they, um, they so put that back point, in the deck, right, or whatever? Yeah, so the floor is called. Um, there's a little debate, as I did say call as before I saw the turn, but okay. um, they go ahead and uh, reshuffle it back in, and the turns at, turn ends up being a nine of diamonds. So 830 to the turn, which is the nine of diamonds, which means you pick up a gutter. I mean, it doesn't make any difference that the eight of diamonds came out and is reshuffled, it's still random, right? It's still there. It's not like that card's been taken yeah, out of right. the deck. So I don't want anybody to get confused no. and think you have, like, less out. It's back in the deck. And yeah. the uh, nine of di – I think when they 
what they do is is that the nine of diamonds here would have been the natural river. And now they shuffle the cards back out. So the river is the same. So this would have mm -hmm. been the river if he hadn't burned and turned quickly, I think. So right. I think, but, but they don't, I don't know if they don't burn in between. I don't know if it would have come out eight, nine or something and you would have made a straight. I think they might not burn. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I think maybe they don't burn when they bring this card out. So maybe it would have come out eight, nine, but whatever. It's all random, man. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be over tilted by that, but now you pick up a gutter. It's eight thirty, Okay. Mm -hmm. And it checks back to the villain mm -hmm. and he go ahead and bets for three fifty. So sort of on the smaller um, side. Okay. Yeah. Um, which I'm surprised about. I played quite a bit with this villain, and he likes to charge draws. He likes to um, try to get you to fold draws. So um, I was pretty surprised that he bet kind of on the smaller side of the pot. Yeah. Um, so the other villain, he folds, um, and it gets back to me. And this is where I think I, I mess up. Um, I should either be shoving or folding, I think, with – um, about my stack to pot ratio. Well, so after, about, so if you were to call the bet, the pot would be like 16. And then how much do you have left? You started with 900. So 250. So you only have 300 left after the call. Is that, is that right? If yeah. you make the call. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the thing is, is that, wow. So you're calling 350 to win 1180 and you have, Plus, if he's never going to fold, it's more like 350 to win 1500 and you've got like 12 outs, six, seven of clubs. You've got yeah. the three offsuits and 12 outs. So you're, so you're going to mm -hmm. be getting like four or five to one. I, it's probably pretty close, man. I mean, I know it sounds crazy to call and then fold to your last 300, but this is these are one of these spots, though, that actually can be good for you because you're getting – if the villain's never going to fold because of pot size, like if you call a 350 and now the pot's 1530 and now you mm -hmm. have like 300 or 350 left, you've just called like, you know, 350 to win basically 1500 because he's never going to fold, right? You're getting like yeah. four and a half to one. You have 12 outs. You certainly have the right price. The question is, is if he has a set, I would look at the board. So if the king pairs or the nine pairs... You could have as few as 10 outs, but even still, even at 10 outs, though, you're still getting the right price. I don't think he's going to fold, yeah. unless you think that you think if he might, he's betting down here because he's scared of Queen 10. I could see a case for check raising all in if you wanted to represent Queen 10, but for the same reasons that I think he's going to pay off a river bet, is he really going to fold to a check raise here? He's going to be getting an no. astronomical price. If there's no fold equity, there's yeah. no reason to check raise. Just call and take your equity. So I don't think this is necessarily a check raise all in or a, or a fold, you know. Okay, yeah. Jamin Burton so, saying that out count is optimistic. It is, but even if it's ten outs, though, I'm saying ten outs. Like, if the board pairs, he's still gonna get like three hundred or three fifty to win upwards of like fifteen hundred. Ten into forty five, he needs three point five to one on the call. I still think he's getting the right price. Mm -hmm. So what did you do? Yeah, so I end up calling uh, after tanking for a bit, and the river ends up being the eight of diamonds that was uh, burned on the. Oh, turn. that's it came out again. <laughs> yeah, it came out again. Oh, that's like a best so case scenario the, for you. Yeah, so it would have been the same run out. Um, I go ahead and now, of course, before you tell me the results, over. yes, there are reverse implied odds if the guy happened to have queen ten and he was there already, but. Yeah. This is a three bet, though, from the cutoff. So, I mean, yeah, I, I understand really when people are saying that they might fold here. Put it this way. Check raising all in on the turn is the worst, I feel like, of all the options. And if he had okay. bet any larger, maybe it's a fold. But I like to gamble in these spots. I think it's probably pretty close. Obviously, you're going to upfront shove now, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I go ahead and shove. Yeah. And he snap calls. Um, so I didn't find out what he had, but he said he got me the whole way, which I figured was seven high. Um, with what? But yeah, I figured I was behind the whole way with seven high. So. Oh, well, yeah, of course, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, some people um, are saying, what if he has ace-king of clubs? Yes, that's definitely true. King-queen of clubs. 
Um, this is not as cut out as just cleaning, you know, counting all the outs. There certainly are reverse implied. There certainly are reverse implied odds. So if it's close, mm-hmm. you have to take those things into account. You know, you sort of have to deviate from, yes, this is certainly a spot where all your outs might not be good. Whereas if the board was, say, like King of Clubs, Jack of Clubs, 5X, now you don't necessarily have to worry about that, right? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So -hmm. those are things to take into consideration when you're looking at the quality of your draw. But I have certainly made calls like this before. I think it's very, very close. Obviously, you have to upfront shove you have to upfront shove any club, even if it's a board pairing club. And then, you know, if you've got reverse implied odds there, you've got reverse implied odds, but what are you going to do? Uh, thanks for the call, man. Yeah, exactly. I appreciate it. Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out crushlivepoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA200. Click on the link right there.